says the king's visit resulted in licentious behaviour. Licentious behaviour? I consider that an understatement. The town was positively bacchic. But at least Mr. Falco has the grace not to mention that idiot Moiro's lack of horsemanship. Who brought this? A boy. Boy? What boy? Just a boy, sir. Leave the child! You, sir, are here to teach, not to play. That is your sole function here, to teach. is known to me. From the lingering affection I bear you, I beg you to renounce the little peasant. Yes, peasant. Sir, here is an abomination, some well, pressed into my hands on my way to mass. One thing I must demand for my own reputation is that you dismiss the boys so well forthwith. Boy, pay him off with a few francs. Not perhaps a trifle unjust. If the man is as innocent in all this as you. He can easily find another post. With Monsieur Valano, for example. Valano? My dear, let's not be too hasty. If you don't dismiss him, I will. This instant. You really want him gone? I've held our peasant in little esteem since he refused to marry Elisa. Merely because once in a while she kept secret tryst with Monsieur Valano. She did what? Who told you that? Elisa and Valor? Oh, sir, that is an old tale. One that I'm not aware of. Monsieur Valano is most liberal in his affections. There cannot be a woman in the region who has not received letters of admiration from that particular gallant. Letters? Valor has written you letters? Frequently. Show them me immediately. Another day when you are more yourself. Now, I command it. Sir, I do not wish to be the cause of discontent between you and our prison governor. Swear that I you will, will not... I swear nothing. Where are they? In my desk. But I'll not surrender the key until you... You will not determine, my darling. Go pay call on Monsieur Valen. Leave now. These are written on the same paper as my letter. Your letter? You too have received a letter. And yet you did not speak of this to me. Sir, is there anything in those to hint that I so much as vouchsafed Monsieur Valano a smile? And yet, you can conceive that I, with some peasant's brat, I'll challenge the villain to a duel. And confirm the rumours. Thank you, sir. You take so great a care of my honour. What am I to do? Dismiss the boy! 
Where have you been, sir? With Monsieur Valenot. Where? He had invited me to call. To this hour? He very kindly extended the invitation to dinner. And did you have an agreeable time, sir? Most. All this to destroy me and gain the services of my servant. No. I'll not fall for Valano's little trap. Children. I've come to say goodbye, Julian. It's over for me now. I've heard my last confession. How could they, Father? I've not come for sympathy, but to try to save you. From what, Master? People believe we priests hear everything first. No, the world merely confesses to us what it already knows. Our only hope is that sometimes there's a moment to intervene. <laughs> before it acts upon its knowledge. You know... Say nothing. I want no more confessions. I have arranged an old friend, the Abbe Pirard. You are to enter his seminary at Besançon immediately. I'm not sure of the wisdom of this course, but it is all I can do to save you from the wrath of the world. Father... No, don't. a spiritual question. I fear it would be more than churlish to come between a man and his god. At least he means he's not running to Valinor. And it does resolve your particular desire as well, my dear. Doesn't it? Purgatory, priest prayers and false piety, 
as there's no other way forward for a man of courage than on his bended knees. Am I a coward? It is no cowardice, sir, to prepare oneself for the act of war. Here is where the power lies now. Take heart, sir. A man of destiny will not remain here long. You, sir, are late. Are you sincere, Monsieur Soler? Are you sincere? Forgive me, Father, for I have sinned. Are you given to fainting? No, Father. Then what was the cause? Beware of smiling, beautiful faces. They can be the mask of falsehood, the theatre of duplicity. Truth so is austere. You understand me? Yes, Father. Name your sins. Why? Why doesn't she write to me? She deserted me as your wife did you. No one tell me how to survive through this. I do not answer my letters. It adds to my hell in a way that nothing else could. I can face damnation. But to be unloved. But the past few months have been beyond pain. Pain suggests at least the possibility of pleasure, if only in memory. Heaven may perhaps permit me not to hate the author of my shame, whom I shall always hold more precious than the entire world, but myself. The sacrifice is made. I dedicate myself to the salvation of those to whom I am bound and those you held so dear. The sacrifice is not made, as you can see, without tears. Farewell, Julian. Be true. At least the boy has not loved a woman of impiety. This much can be hidden. The government has no real or legitimate power. Say that delegated to it by God's vicar on earth. So sad not that we can expect a reward. The power of the church knows no bounds. Neither does the Pope's generous bounty toward his servants. Why, my friends, I have known mountain parishes where the priest's rewards were greater than those of some cities. And not only in his fees, but also in fat capons, sausage, meats, an endless stream of butter, eggs, milk, delicious delicacies. In such places, the curé rules supreme. No good dinner would pass without his presence. Not your taste, Monsieur Sorel. Fine capon not good enough for you then, ah, uh, Mr. Luther. You were asked a question, brother. Or do you not deem us worthy of your wit? I'm as fond of capon as the next. And sausage? Tell us how you love sausage. I worshipped sausage. 
For me, as it is with you, sausage is my very sacrament. Observe, sir. I signed out of the seminary exactly six minutes to six. It's now exactly one minute too. My dear boy. I also request that during the day I not be left out of your sight for one moment. I'm afraid of the storytellers at the seminary, eh? To work, my friend, to work. Are you afraid of heights? They are. where the women like to hide. Are you faint, my son? Too much exertion. But you have done well, my son. Come. Why should you feel shame? He meant her no harm? She obviously feels that. Then she betrays your love, sir. Don't misdirect your anger, sir. They come from large and starving families. Don't judge them for wearing black to gain their daily bread. They do not besmirch the dignity of the church, but are exactly what it wants. An army that asks no questions, but advances on its belly. Don't look to what the troops are doing, but to what the generals intend. There'll be period. Thank you for your concern. 
I will not forget it. I am not in ill health, though the woman may have it so. But I will soon be forced to leave here as punishment for my crime. If crime it be to stand against intrigue and instill intelligence in my students in preference to indulgence. <laughs> if in any way I might be of any service. There is very little left in my power. But if you had the list of the examinations, I intend conferring on you the post of New Testament tutor. That at least might save you from the hounds. What are you doing? Foolish, foolish boy. I fear for you. Trust in God, not in man. Go. go. Father, I will not disappoint you. Ego alpha et omega, primus et novissimus, principium et finis, beati qui lavan stolus suus, ut sit potestas, iorum superlignum vitae, in portis in Trent in civitatem, foris canes et venefici, et impudici, et homicidae, idolis servientes, et omnis, qui amat et facit mendacium. Monsieur Sorel, we are impressed with your knowledge of Latin and the scriptures. Indeed, we are. However, the uh, Abbe de Frilair, I am nothing but admiration. But is your landscape of the Golden Age limited only to the scriptures? Does it not include the great poets and thinkers of that time? What a virgin. Horace? Monsieur Sorel, have we now tracked down the borders of your learning? In primis Lucanus Aper, Lene fiunt Austro Captus, ut auebat canae pater. Acria circum rapula, nectucae, radices, qualia lassum per wallum stomacum. Cicer, alec, facula cor. Why stop, my friend? Monsieur Sorel recites from Horace of a splendid meal, with wild boar, turnips, lettuces, radishes, such things as whet a jaded appetite. No doubt a prelude to some Roman orgy. And do you know by heart the love poems of this pagan author? Lord Jude, Alexander Bell, Paul Garrard, Michel Moreau, Julian Sorrell, Julian Sorrell. Who is it? A friend. you betrayed our love. Why? Why did you never write? Did our love mean nothing to you? I wrote every day for months. It was too late to speak of this. The priests have taught me to repent my love. No. Yes. Leave me to my penance. Go, Julian. I'm beyond your touch now. Is it that easy? Then I will leave. And I swear to go where you'll never have to see me again. I leave for Paris. Paris? Yes, my one true friend has found me a post there. Paris. You come back just to torment me. Devil! Forgive me. I never dreamt my love would be a curse. <gasps>
say, Elisa nearly caught me. I don't think she ever sleeps. In the years since you've been gone, her eyes have never left me. She whispers to my husband all the time. And to the town, no doubt. I'm constantly watched over. The priests visit regularly to guide my soul. <laughs> The world has spent so much time in watching us both, Julian. Why? Are we so important? I don't want to leave. Hide me in your closet. Feed me from your hand. <laughs> Pray the children outside the window. I want to see how much they've grown. Touch me. nothing. Retreat has never did me from it. Go! to work in one of the most powerful houses in Paris. Julian! Father? The Marquis de la Mole is a man of considerable influence. Clear off! Come back! But he's also a man possessed by caprice, which is the main reason that we are both under his patronage. It amuses him to raise up the victims of his old enemy, the Abbe de Flaire. <laughs> Beyond that, however, we will have to prove our worth. He seeks as a secretary a man he can trust. I have personally vouched for your sincerity. I would also caution you to be wary of the family. While their ancestors fought in the Crusades, yours are merely carpenters. They are bound to look down on you. So it seems to me I'm not long for Paris. There is little hope of advancement for men like us without the patronage of the great nobles. However, if life amongst these capricious souls becomes unendurable, come to me. I will share my living equally with you. Sir, my father hated me from the cradle. I've always considered that my greatest misfortune. However, I shall no longer complain. Now I've found a true father in you. Speak not of fortune, only of providence. They hide behind high walls. Do they fear a revolution so much? <laughs> that is the one question ever to be voiced. No, sir. You did not think. <sighs> Sit. I am surrounded by sycophants, Monsieur Sorel. I am assured you will not add to the ranks, in which case you constitute a divine blessing. Copy these letters. I understand you have a prodigious memory. In a month, 
I expect you to know their varying forms by heart and to be able to write variants of them with only the smallest directions from me. Is this possible? Yes, sir. I omitted to mention that for dinner, you must dress. Stockings, sir. Respect yourself, my friend. I do. It's terrible. Monsieur Sorel. My wife, the Marquise de la Mole. The Bishop of Agra. My very good friend, the academician, Monsieur Gilbert, his charming wife. Monsieur Tambeau, his nephew, you already, uh... Ah! The Comte de Quasinois. A sobering influence on both my children. Where are they? Late as usual? <laughs> we will not wait. I'm not late, Father. <laughs> and where is your sister? I'm not my sister's keeper, sir. And pity any man who would be. <laughs> now, where? This is Monsieur Sorel, my new secretary. I ask you to watch over him. It'll be my pleasure, sir. Let us lay open the heart of the question. Does a man create greater poetry out of a state of leisure, wherein he may write from a sense of personal joy, fulfilment, or from the very imperative of survival, the need to earn his daily bread? Ease creates poetry. Vocation simply manufactures verse. Was not La Fontaine and Chapelle engaged in the act of self-diversion? But what of the British poet laureate, Suffolk, who never composed a line except for gain? One can hardly say that diminished his worth. He was a far lesser poet than the man that he traduced. And whom would that be, mademoiselle? The great Lord Byron. Mathilde. Forgive me, mother, I was deep in contemplation. Let us anchor ourselves to the classic poets where there is, perhaps, less debate on their individual merits. But we know precious little of their lives. Horace, for example, was he rich man or poor? Did he write to eat or eat to write? Julian? The word is that you are something of a classical scholar yourself, Monsieur Sorel. Or is your knowledge merely limited to scripture? Perhaps those profane poets hold no interest for you. Si bene te nove, scurantis speciam prebere, professus amicum ut matrona meretrici, dispa erit aquae discolor scurae. Discolor in fido scurari destabit amicus, est hic diversium vito viteum propimaius, asperitis agrestis, et in concina gravisque, qui se commandant ton socute, Detribus atris, dum volt libertas dici, mira veraque virtus. Whether Horace wrote for pleasure or for profit, I cannot say. Tis my belief, however, he wrote out of a search for virtue. Past loves, Julian. They are like old campaigns. The outcome can never be changed. Monsieur, Madame Sinclair. <laughs> Your prophecy was correct, my friend. The boy is both diligent and highly intelligent. If a trifle solemn. He's hardly left the library since he arrived. And I fear he finds the evening somewhat painful for his pious soul. Then perhaps we should relieve him of his suffering and ourselves of embarrassment. Certainly not, my dear. Father Pirard and I are set to see how he might shine. With a little polish. Monsieur Decoli. Spare me more petitions. Monsieur Decoli has left off his wig to show us his learned brow. No doubt he's hoping to secure the Legion's honor. The fellow deals in millions. Why does he come here to suffer my father's jibes? The other day he shouted at him, 
How many friends have you betrayed today, my dear Deculi? Sir, the man is deceitful. Who is not? Monsieur Sorel, enlighten me. What is the height of the citadel at Besançon? Is it higher than that of Montmartre? Well, I think... Monsieur Le Baron Baton. It's a ridiculous name. A den of villains. Father, is there no way to be spared this? I was less bored at the seminary. You must not expect intellectual distinction. No one here would have the bad grace to discuss any topic of merit, aside from personal advancement. Let me take you to a place you might find more congenial. What an ugly man. Why? Why is there no political vision? Why are we cursed with the deadness of aspiration? The reason is very simple. In the last 14 or 15 years since the so-called restoration, the powers have sought to put back the clock. The petty have returned to possess the world. Men of meager spirit who count life and love only in coins. Oh, it happens not just here, but across Europe. We've entered an epoch without heart, devoid of soul. That is why people are so bored. Nothing is of consequence. We even commit cruelties without passion. All the worse. If one is to commit a crime, it should be done at least with pleasure. That's the only excuse that can justify them. Perhaps you are right, sir. We live our lives, we do nothing with joy. So we remember nothing, not even our crimes. Your crime was not to kill. The revolution Count Altamira led was unsuccessful because he would not cut off three heads. Three heads sacrificed to the king would have brought political concession. And perhaps betrayed the dream of freedom. No. Does the end justify the means? I would have sacrificed three heads to save the lives of four. That is hardly a religious conviction. Religion and freedom do not walk hand in hand in our world. But they can walk together. For the question of freedom is a spiritual one. It is a faith. An aspiration of the heart. She was one of the three heads they asked for. Those, those are the men and women you still inspire. It is no longer enough. It will be. It must be. What is the meaning of this impudence, sir? <laughs> Explain yourself. Have we lost the power of words, sir? Then what of action? <laughs> sir, your address. I scorn you. I scorn you, sir! <laughs> Shit on your shoes. Shit on your neck. Satisfaction, sir. I am entitled. You're a coward. Give him satisfaction. Your card, sir. Well, give him your address or be damned as a coward. Go on. Once upon a time, we'd have shot his sort like a dog. Mm, that's exactly what I intend to do. Good man. Legion Donna. Got this in the days it meant something, sir. Leaving. Lieutenant retired, 96. Battle of Leipzig, under General Marmel. Would you do me the honour of being my second, sir? On one condition. If you miss him, you fight me next. Agreed. Monsieur Sorel, I'm afraid you have the advantage over me. Well, you have my card, but I'm not aware of our acquaintance. You are the Comte de Beauvoisy. So my lawyers would have me believe. T to what do I owe the pleasure? I have come to fight you, sire. Well, I will, of course, be honoured to accommodate you. However, would you deem it impudence if I inquired in what manner I've given offence? The man who insulted me offered me your card. 
but I am not he. No, sir, I fear there has been some mistake. <laughs> well, this is an unusual and delicate situation. I mean, if you feel my obvious lassitude in respect of disposing of my card... In no way, sir. I do not hold you responsible for what has clearly been misappropriated. However, I am also aware of the manner of my unwarranted intrusion on your privacy. And if... There has been no intrusion, sir. But you are most gracious, sir. Miscreant, your coachman. Well, he's dismissed forthwith. But you must appreciate, sir. If I can hardly permit the beating of my servants by anybody other than myself. Of course. Follow me to the Bois de Boulogne. I'll acquire a second on the way. You! Ride me! Shoot, sir. 